Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to hang out with me. I do have the kittens in here because they were literally crying outside my door. They do not like closed doors and they just they're so freaking cute. I just can't say no. So anyways, um, today I'm going to be doing a video on my best and worst magic deals part two. I will link the first part in the down bar below. I did this with my fiance Paul and we basically just went through all like the really awesome things we scored and the not so awesome things. I also just want to say I'm not someone who's like insanely bitter about stuff. To me, this is more of just like, oh, that's a bummer. Like I'm not someone when like card gets reprinted where I'm like, oh, I lost out on so much money. Like that's not okay. So anyways, yeah, this is just meant to be like a sort of fun, fun sort of thing just to kind of talk about it um and whatnot and kind of tell like some cool stories about how I acquired some cards so let's hop into it starting with the best the cats they just do whatever they want um okay so is a foil Najila and it's actually a really cool story about how I acquired this card so we had gotten a foil we opened up a foil what was the card blue not blue sun zenith we opened up a foil true name nemesis in our box, which at the time, and the card is still like really expensive, at the time was like $230. Well, anyways, my friend Chuck is like obsessed with foils just like me, and we had like sent him this picture and he was like, want that. So anyways, he gave us, I think, partly in cash and the other part we had gotten for cards in trade. And one of the cards in his binder was a foil Najila, the Blade Blossom, and I was immediately like, I need this card. Okay, so sorry for the interruptions. We love them, but they just, they're very noisy when they're in here. And they just, they can't handle, like, the level. If they were, like, calm and chill, they'd just be, like, chilling over here, like, sitting, like, going to sleep. But we're not at that point right now. So, anyways... Um, this was a really, really exciting find um, to get this in my binder because it's a card like it's very insanely expensive in the foil. And so I was just really excited to score a really expensive foil in a trade, which was just really incredibly exciting. And it's just one of the best magic cards that I own. And I just really love it. So hopping into the worst deal. Oh, God. I'm like, ah, oh, this is such an ah oh, moment just like thinking about it. And that is Death Baron. And I, I want to like give the story behind this because pretty much um around the time when I was playing 60 card magic, which obviously I don't play 60 card magic anymore. I only play competitively, co competitively commander. No, I play casual commander. There we go. I'm so sorry if you hear them meowing. They really want to get in here, but they're really disruptive, as you've noticed, so they can't be in here. But um, back in when I was getting Death Baron, this card regularly, non-foil, was about like $10, and I needed four of them. And I dished out $40 to get those cards, and I don't even remember getting rid of them. Like, I don't remember, like, the trade or whatnot, but I'm pretty sure I sold them, and I definitely did not get as much money on them. So that was, like, a huge bummer and a huge loss because I don't play 60 count anymore, so, like, me having four of that card just, like, doesn't make any sense it just was kind of one of those like oh wish I like didn't spend the money on that you know what I mean okay for the best I have secret lair and I've only gotten a couple of secret lairs Paul got all of the gods because he built a god deck which is really cool and I can't wait to show you guys and we got this the bitter blossom one and then um oh I think I got the ladies one too which you know ladies it makes sense but um yeah I really enjoyed all the secret layers I think they've done a really good job with secret layer and overall I was just really happy with the cards that they chose and just um whatnot I've done a whole video talking about the execution I don't like the execution of that you can check that video out if you want to know my thoughts on that but overall just like really enjoyed secret layer okay coming in at um the worst this one happened pretty recently and that is I got a foil vault of whispers and you might be like, this is such a cool card. Like, why are you upset about it? Um, so I'm upset about it because I got this card in Magic, um, Magic Fest Austin. And I was really excited about it because I bought this card specifically for Alila. And I realized, because you guys told me that it doesn't trigger the lands with the Leela, and I felt really stupid because how long have I been playing this game for and I made that mistake. And I'm still really upset that I made that mistake. But anyways, I don't have a use for that card anymore. So I got this Foil Vault of Whispers and I just have it sitting in my binder and I just need to get rid of it because I don't want it. And I'm not going to 
build an artifact deck. Like, I'm just not going to. Alila's the closest thing. And she's like half artifacts, half enchantments. Like, I'm not doing it. So anyways, that. Okay, as for my best, this is, I don't want to say cheating a little bit, but like, it just kind of like worked out this way. And I'm really excited is a foil blood artist. And funny story about this, I remembered I had been placing a, an order a really long time ago. So the way that I used to order cards is really different from how I order things now. And pretty much what I had done is I had purchased the a regular blood artist because at the time I just was looking for whatever was cheapest. So I got a regular blood artist. Well, anyways, the seller messaged me. So it was like $3 at the time. And the seller messaged me and was like, hey, I'm so sorry, but I actually only have the foil. I'm going to send you the foil. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's okay. And again, I wasn't really at the, the level of foil, like loving foils about where I'm at right now. So I was like, this is really exciting. And um, it was just a really, really cool thing. So anyways, I have a foil blood artist and I'm just really happy that that just like worked out. And I just love that story so okay as for my worst mm, like real salty that i have approximately eight mismatched lightning bolts yes i hate myself i'm aware it's terrible it's like absolutely abysmal i feel like i'm never going to be able to get rid of them and realistically they're all like two bucks a piece like really doesn't matter but also like i just want them out of my binder and i'm just like who is gonna want eight not foil mismatched like lightning bolts like obviously no one why did I and I'm mad about it because I think I had them and then when Paul and I were playing modern like he had a set and then I had a set which is why we have so many and we're not gonna play them in commander so they're just kind of chilling there and I'm not a fan and I don't know why they're all mismatched so I'm sorry I hate it it's I'm not a fan okay Okay, as for my best, this is kind of a cool story. I have one of the misprinted Corpse Knight 2-3. So this card is not very expensive in foil, but to be honest, I actually prefer having the, the, what's, what's like the word? It's like an, um, what's it called? It's not an altar. It's like a, like an error. Like it was a printing error. They printed some of the, um, of these in Corset 2020 as being two threes. This card's actually just supposed to be a two, two. But the fact that it's a 2-3, I just like really, I don't know why, I don't really know if I can explain it. I just really like that it was like an error and I just think it looks really cool. And um, I don't know, I just have it and I just really like it. I traded for it, it's not very expensive, but it was just kind of like a cool little story and I just really liked it, so. Okay, as for my worst, um, this is um, a grave crawler, and I purchased this grave crawler when regular, not foil, when it was about like fifteen dollars, and right now the foil is about fifteen dollars. It's a little bit less than that, and I'm a little bit annoyed that I had just bought that card when it was 15 and then the price dropped. I don't even know why the price dropped to be completely honest. I feel like Grape Color has been, it was funny. I feel like when I, when I started playing Commander or, or like, I guess when I started playing Magic, I remember that card being ex expensive and then it was expensive when I bought it and then the price just dipped and I was like, oh, I like lost out on like that sort of thing. So that was just like kind of annoying, you know? Okay, moving on to the best, I got a Kindred Discovery in a trade. And like, to me, I feel like cards like this, I feel like are a little bit harder to come by. Like really, really good, like solid cards that are like over $30. I feel like can sometimes be a little bit harder to come by in a trade. But we were getting rid of a bunch of stuff. And I'm kind of the person, to be honest, where when I put something in my trade binder, like I don't care where it goes, if that makes sense. Like I, that, that, what I trade for, if I trade like one, if I'm getting one card and I trade away 10, I don't care. Like I'm, it's just, it doesn't really matter to me because I really want that one card, obviously. And Kinder Discovery was one of those just like really good trades. And I remember getting it and I think I had gotten it. I don't remember if, because the way that Paul and I do trades, we do trades together because like he's my fiance and we just like, you know, put our collections together and we just do trades together just like, you know, it just, like that's the way we do life. Like it just makes sense like that. Anyways, so we had been looking at this card and I had gotten that card and I was like, oh, I think Paul said, I want that card for, um, for pirates. And I was like, okay, cool. So we traded for it. And then he's like, you know what? You should put this in Merfolk. And I was like, no, like you get, you put it in pirates. Like you said you wanted it. Like, I don't need it. 
you know? And he was like, no, 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 it's fine. So, um, he, I ended up getting that card for, um, Merfolk and, um, which I would have been totally fine if he took it for pirates. Like, it's totally fine. I don't need the card in there. It's just a really good card. Anyways, um, really super happy that I scored this card in a trade. It's a pretty penny, you know, it's a pretty expensive card. It's only been printed one time. So I hope this card gets a reprint because I want it in foil. You know, we all know Tracy wants cards in foil. So, uh, anyways, Kinder Discovery, great card. Okay. This last card, funny story, I actually don't know what happened to this card, so it's kind of a mystery, but I actually remember this card, I just don't know what happened to it. And that is a beat up Avenger of Zendikar, i.e. A to Z. Okay, so I just wonder sometimes when I talk about these things, like A to Z, like, do you guys call that in your playgroup? Because we definitely do in our playgroup. Okay, so I was buying cards at my mage at mages my local game store which i love love my guys there but i remember buying this really beat up a to z like i got it on like a dumb price like of course you know like because it was beat up and like really damaged and just like why why did i buy that like why did i say to myself do you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna buy a really beat up a vendor of a card like who are you why i'm someone who like near mint lightly played that's like my jam when i order cards that's what i do i am not someone who is like it just to me it's like if i ever do decide one day to get rid of my cards like i take good care of my cards and i why would i buy a damaged card like why and it's like not even an expensive card like it's literally like five dollars like i did it because i know i wanted to support them but i shouldn't have bought it because it was beat up. But truthfully now, y'all, and my, my thoughts were, I was like, I'm never going to be able to get rid of this card. I don't have it anymore, so I don't know where it is. So I'm assuming I traded it because there's no way I hung on, to, like, there's no way I put it in, like, our box to keep. So moral of the story is, I have no idea where it is, but someone got it, and I'm sorry that it's beat up. <laughs> I'm sure if I traded it, I gave it to them at a very severe discount because it was, it was beat up. She was beat up, so... Anyways, that was it for talking about my best and my worst magic deals part two. I would really love to know cards that you've gotten a really bad deal on or you've gotten a really good spicy deal on. I think those cards are always like super fun to talk about. So anyways, um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll catch you guys in my next one.